global population change is going to prove one of the defining challenges for the 21st century. Within 20 years, we will have half the population of Western Europe aged over 50, and unexpectedly, a quarter of Asia will be aged over 60. But it isn't so much the increase in elderly, it is also the decline in youth. If we map the percentage of older people across the globe, you can see that the majority of the countries will have at least 20% of their population aged over 60 by 2050, here shown in red. And indeed, Europe and much of Asia will have a third of its population aged over 60, here in green. But the other side of the equation is the declining of youth. And these red old countries also have low percentages of younger people. In fact, it is a mirror image as shown here in yellow. And only Sub-Saharan Africa will have at least 20% of its population still under 15 by 2050. It is falling fertility as much as increasing longevity that is driving population aging. Total fertility rate, the number of children per reproductive woman, has plummeted across the globe. Less than one child per reproductive woman in Hong Kong and one, and two, uh, one uh, in Singapore and Korea. As a consequence, we now have mature societies. Europe became mature uh, at the millennium. There are now more people over 60 in Europe than under 15. And Asia will be mature by 2040 when there will be more old than young in the region. We have grown accustomed to population pyramids. And these have large numbers of young people at the base, driving our societies and economies. However, as in Japan, many societies will go through an inverted V-shape. And it is this decline in young people that is going to have implications for our economies at the global and societal level. If we take global migration, for example, much of this trend has been driven by the demand of the old countries of the north sucking in young migrant labour from the younger, poorer countries of the south. Here we have Indian fishermen working in the northern construction industry. This will be unsustainable when the south also begins to lose its youth. Now we can understand this in more detail if we look at the shift in total dependency ratios from young dependents to old dependents. Behind this graph are a hundred hidden workers and the young blue bars are the dependent young and the red bars are the dependent elderly. And the shift is between 1950 to 2050. And if we take the case of Japan, you can see that total dependency will go from 60 dependents per 100 workers to one to one by 2050. China, however, is going to see a decline in its total dependency ratio from a high of 80 dependents to every 100 workers in the youth-driven 1960s and 70s to 60 dependents by 2050. And China currently has a low of 40 dependents per 100 workers due to its falling fertility. Just waiting for these people. Okay. One of the problems of population aging is the potential burden of large numbers of old people supported by a small young generation. But that is because the policy debate has concentrated on public transfers and has ignored the substantial internal private transfers that occur within our families and households. Our global ageing survey, 44,000 people aged over 40 in 24 countries, maps private family and household transfers. And we here compare three European countries, UK, France and Germany in black, with Hong Kong, Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia and Singapore and South Korea. And you can very clearly see the large upward transfers from adult children, that's G2, to older parents, G1, here in Asia. But there are also considerable downward transfers occurring in both regions, which negates the myth that young people are giving net support to older parents. In fact, we can hypothesize that whereas public welfare has knocked out the upward transfers, as in Europe, it does not impact upon the downward transfers that we find in both of the regions. 
Now, population aging is going to be a challenge that is going to be moderated by different demographies, different economies, different societies and cultures. But it is really important that we look at the entire population dynamic. And we don't just concentrate on older people, but we accept that the decline in youth is going to have as big an impact as the growth in the old. Thank you.